Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Justine Murphy, and this is Light Matters for February 26, 2014. On this week's show, an optical circuit uses stretchable interconnections, a graphene sandwich improves biomolecule imaging, and we introduce the Ocean Optics 2014 Young Investigator Award recipient. The first optical circuit to use stretchable, bendable interconnections could be in the pipeline following years of difficulty with the technology. A team of Belgian researchers is developing the new interconnections with two materials, both made of a rubbery substance called PDMS, which is the transparent core material through which the light travels, and a surrounding transparent layer with a lower refractive index. This configuration traps light in the guide's core, causing it to propagate along the length of the interconnection, even when stretched up to 30% and bent around an object the diameter of a human finger. Until now, a way to enable these materials to carry light while stretched had not been possible. The researchers will also develop smaller waveguides, reducing them from 50 microns to just a few microns in diameter. This could require a redesign of the parts of the waveguide where light enters and exits. Future applications could include building networks of wearable body sensors, moving machine parts including robotic limbs, and deformable consumer electronics. The work was published in Optics Express. Atomic level images of a biological molecule in its natural environment can now be obtained by sandwiching the wet sample between sheets of graphene. A team at the University of Illinois Chicago developed the technique which shows the molecule ferritin, a highly conserved protein that regulates and sequesters excess potentially toxic iron levels and releases iron when needed in its natural watery environment. Biological samples typically have been contained in what is called a liquid stage wedged between relatively thick silicon nitrate windows. The thin layers of graphene in the new system work better, the researchers say, because they are nearly transparent. Using a low energy beam to minimize sample damage yields a fuzzy picture that must be refined using an algorithm. Graphene layers, however, allowed the researchers to generate atomic level images of ferritin with high energies. In a single functioning molecule, researchers could see that iron oxide in ferritin's core changes its electrical charge, initiating the release of iron. Identifying how ferritin handles iron may lead to a better understanding of the human disorders caused by iron toxicity. The research was published in Advanced Materials. Ocean Optics has named Gabriel Orsinger the 2014 recipient of the Young Investigator Award. A graduate student at the University of Arizona, Orsinger was honored for his research of the use of gold-coated liposomes as a tool for studying cellular behavior as it relates to cancer and other diseases. The work was completed alongside his advisor, Merrick Romanowski, Research Assistant Professor of Biomedical Engineering at the University of Arizona Cancer Center. Ocean Optics has presented the award annually since 2005 to a graduate student researcher who is the primary author of the best juried paper submitted as part of the Colloidal Quantum Dots for Biomedical Applications 9 conference at the BIOS Photonics West Symposium. Orsinger also receives $1,000 and the graduate student's advisor receives a company grant. At this year's Photonics West, we asked members of the photonics industry how they got their start in photonics. We've shown you a few of those interviews over the past few weeks, and here are a few more. Well, I was drag kicking and screaming into it as a graduate student. I was building a water clarity tester for the photon decay experiment that was a joint research operation between the University of California at Irvine, where I was a graduate student, uh, Brookhaven National Laboratories, and University of Michigan. And I remember in building this water clarity tester, uh, a lot of little mirror mounts and things of that sort that were made by uh, Newport Corporation and, and others in the industry. And uh, one day, a gentleman by the name of Milton Chang toured the laboratory and left his business card. So that's how I got into photonics, and that's how I met Milton. It wasn't a planned entry into photonics. I, was, uh, I have a background in uh, medical and process uh, control and measurement. And I came into photonics, but since the, it was in the 70s, and I'm still there, and I'm very passionate, and I believe that we make a big difference in making light, moving light, and measuring light, which has tremendous applications. And it actually, I think, even made me feel better after 9-11 because because we really make a difference and photonics, I mean, every, everything makes a difference but I just happen to be part of photonics and I've seen the pro progress and the changes and the technology and that's what it's all about for me. That's it for this edition of Light Matters. Email us with your questions or comments at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.